Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Friday, July 11th, 2014. This is the end of the week, obviously. Uh, not much to focus on here. Unfortunately, Thursday did the one thing we probably would have not wanted to see, which was gapped down and then headed back up. Uh, the NQs, the NASDAQ side filled the gap, while the ES did not. It came close, but it did not actually fill. And, uh, and then we dropped a little bit after that. So we ended up closing with the S&P down 8 and the NASDAQ uh, NDX down almost 13, which is considerably better than where we opened. Uh, but, you know, that's not how we wanted to see this happen. As you can see here on the chart, this is the ES, uh, the broad market futures. Got the sell signal last Thursday. We've rolled over ever since. But, you know, you don't want to gap. You want to actually sell off and catch those moves down. And instead, a big... A uh, huge gap down and then a retracement to the upside. Most of the trading for the 75% of the day was on the long side, which is not what we were looking to do. Volume ended up light uh, again. And uh, so just not an ideal scenario for what this week had set up to. We had a terrific Monday and Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday is a little light. We did do okay today on some stuff, but it certainly wasn't what I was hoping for. I was hoping for uh, either a flat opening or a small gap up and then just sell off. And instead, we got a we got a bar that looks like we sold off, but most of the play for the day was actually to the upside. So that's not what you like to see. Uh, so there's the ES, uh, there's the S and P 500 itself, just so you can see that. Um, obviously, we're still trying to break very short term moving average. We got a lot of room to the downside still uh, off of this signal. So uh, don't let that fool you that we've uh, had a couple of down days. It's really just the start more than likely. Here's the Nasdaq side, the NDX. See, again, you see the candle open down and was just up the whole session. Uh, not really what we wanted to see. Uh, let's take a look at oil, crude oil. Uh, dipped back under 103. We're now nine bars down for the setup phase of oil. By the way, we haven't had any sort of seeker count on this one for a long time, just the, just the setup phases, as opposed to gold, which did have a seeker 13 buy signal back at the beginning of June and has been up ever since. And we're now seven bars into the actual uh, sell countdown phase on that. And we'll also be watching the green static trend line there. Uh, here's a quick look at the SOX, the semiconductor index. It's still holding up uh, right around that short-term moving average. And here's the biotechs, which did sell off really good Monday and Tuesday. And uh, they look a little weaker. And this is you know, still just what I would call the beginning of something, cracking that, uh, that trend line and that short-term moving average. Uh, so we could definitely see a lot more action on the downside, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, obviously, gaps are what they are. They happen sometimes. They're not ideal for our trading purposes. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the intraday action, what we saw here uh, in the markets. Here's the ES five-minute bars. Again, you see that uh, on, <laughs> it's kind of neat, on Wednesday, we had this one bar late in the day that ticked up and gave us a 13 sell signal. And even though it looked flat for the last two hours of the day on Wednesday after the uh, release of the Fed minutes from the last meeting, we, we just we popped up on that announcement and went dead sideways, reached up just to print one new high there, gave us a 13 sell signal. And then that roll, flattened us out for the rest of the session, and then we gap down. So that 13 sell signal looks pretty strong right now. But, of course, that's not, again, that's not how you want it to happen. The gaps are right, not ideal. Uh, meanwhile, you can see that we spent most of the day here crawling to the upside before finally uh, wiggling back a little bit late in the session. Here's the NASDAQ side. This one was even stronger uh, after the gap down. And the first 30 minutes was back and forth, unfortunately. That's, that's the other unfortunate part about these gap days. You know, you can get a gap down and just keep selling off. Uh, but I don't think the institutions wanted to miss all these prices. They wanted to sell at these levels. So uh, they let it come back up. But unfortunately, the early 10, 15 minutes was to the upside. And then we rolled over and basically hit the lows again. So they kind of shook everybody both ways, uh, unfortunately, before they just rallied it. Otherwise, we would have had actually a very great, really nice session. Uh, instead, we had to come into some stuff a little late uh, because the market was shaking both ways. But the NASDAQ side, as you can see, did fill the gap. So that's satisfied. Uh, the, the ES side did not do that. I should also point out we still have some gaps um, even higher uh, up at the uh, 1970 level on the ES from back on uh, uh, Monday. So could reach up 12 points and fill those gaps, have them over with. And that would probably leave the institutions with a higher price point to start from if they wanted to sell off uh, starting next week. But I, again, Fridays are not typically the day that you see things sell off. So I I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Of course, some of it has to do with what's going on in the Middle East as well. Uh, just to, to point out, there is no economic data of interest tomorrow. We have the Treasury balance number at 2 in the afternoon Eastern time. On a Friday, nobody's even going to be around to notice that uh, in the summer especially. 
And then next week is options expiration week. So uh, we'll have some notes about that going into next week. And we also are getting close to starting the core earnings releases for Q2 and not far away from the GDP number from Q2 either, which will be important to the market. Uh, so we'll be calling it mostly from the tape. My scans did not turn up a ton. I had a lot of calls coming into uh, today, Thursday. Uh, but of course, the gap kind of messed most of that up. There's not as much in my calls tonight. So we'll be uh, calling it from the tape in the morning, especially, and in the afternoon if there's anything to do. As usual, hope to see you in the lab, help you out, see if we can make you some money. Have a great trading week. And if this video is useful to you, please like the video on YouTube. Helps us out. Thanks.